What is up guys? It is Brandon here from The Refined Investor where we talk about everything from passive income, business, and of course investing. Now today's video is on a controversial subject and that is debt. Whether you should have debt or not, and some of the main attributes of people who are actually debt free. Now, why would you wanna be debt free? Well, I think many of the perks of that are very obvious, but some people might not get it. And that's why I'm going to explain five different ways that you can be like someone who is debt free. And these are just five of the main attributes that I've noticed um, you know, over friends and family that I know that are actually debt free in every aspect of life. So I think it's safe to say that all of us know people in life, whether it's us or friends or family that have debt and that can be, you know, credit card debt. It can be debt on their vehicle. It can be debt on their home, student loans, personal loans, business loans, you name it. We all know people who are in debt. And a lot of people nowadays, especially people who follow Dave Ramsey, like the idea of not owing anything to anyone. It's sort of a freeing feeling, knowing that you don't owe anyone for your car or your house, and you don't really have to answer to anyone. You don't have to answer to the creditors or you know anyone. And to some people, that's the American dream. So without further ado, let's get into the five things that people do who are debt free. The first thing is something called delayed gratification. And I think a lot of you guys know what that means, but there's a lot of people out there who want things instantly. And when I talk about instantly, I'm talking about things like, you know, uh, the newest iPhone or the newest iWatch or the newest car or you know the newest house or the newest this that whatever they want things now and they're willing to pay a premium or go into debt to get said things now people who are debt free know that this you know this rash thinking isn't the way to go about getting what you want so they practice what's called or what's known as delayed gratification where you simply, you know you want something and you put a plan together, a financial plan together of how you're going to obtain said thing. Now it might not happen you know, instantly, it might not happen this week, this month, or even this year. But the point is, you're practicing delayed gratification, you're putting what matters first and foremost, and then saving to make sure that you can get what you want and you're doing it in a smart way. But as we all know, delayed gratification is not satisfying, right? Who wants to wait for what they want? But again, it is the people who are debt free and living life on their terms who get to feel this way. The second thing debt free people do is live below their means. And I've talked about this in the past, you know, a couple of my other videos, but you know, people nowadays, when they get a raise, say at work, they're always ready to like, hey, what can I allocate these additional funds to buy? And this really starts getting into a tumble effect where you know, whenever someone makes X amount more, they're ready, they're already thinking in their head, hey, what am I going to spend that money on? And that's really, really flawed thinking, especially for people who want to be debt free for multiple reasons. When you're making more money, the first thought in your mind shouldn't be like, hey, what can I spend this on? It should be like, oh, hey, okay, well, I'm making more money. You know, I'm gonna put more into a savings account or I'm going to put more into my 401k or I'm gonna put more into my you know, personal investment account, whatever. That getting rid of that first thought of like, hey, oh, I'm making more money now, I got a raise, I need to go buy something. Getting rid of, rid of that initial thought is going to be key if you want to be living like the debt-free do. And this doesn't mean that you have to slum it, living below your means, right? It doesn't mean that you have to slum it. It doesn't mean you have to live you know, in a crappy house or drive a crappy car or you know, not ever be able to upgrade any part of your lifestyle. It's just about living you know, smart, right? It's about like, hey, if I'm bringing in this much income, I have a plan in place to be able to allocate this for housing, this for transportation, this for food, et cetera, and really being strict 
and living by that guideline. All right, the third thing debt-free people do is maintain some sort of savings account. Now this can be, you know, if you like to keep your money in a savings account or a checking account, or you know, even an investment account, it's just maintaining a certain amount of money so that if something happens, some, uh, first of all, this has to be money in cash that you can easily get you know, within a day's notice. But you have to make sure that you have access to capital. So like I said, if something happens, you lose your job, you get hurt, you, know, you can't work, you can't, for some reason you stop you know, bringing in money that you can pay to, you know, you can pay your bills and you can keep living the lifestyle that you are living. And I think I read somewhere that um, something like, you know, less than 30% of Americans have 10,000 saved for a rainy day. And that was just like mind blowing to me, right? It's these people, they're living paycheck to paycheck. And don't get me wrong, you know, some people aren't making um, you know, enough money to save each and every month. And, you know, they're living paycheck to paycheck. They're trying, they're working, you know, many jobs. But at the same time, those people might not be, um, you know, utilizing certain principles to cut out things that they don't need and save for a rainy day. But it's so, so, so important. Debt-free people always have cash on hand to take care of whatever comes up, right? They're not going to need to go to a lender and get, you know, a private loan to go and pay for their car so it doesn't get repossessed or, you know, go pay their mortgage so their house doesn't get, you know, taken back by the bank. Uh, Debt-free people are always thinking ahead, saving for a rainy day, and making sure that they're, you know, putting their life, um, you know, in their hands and not relying on anyone else to take care of them. So there's been many opinions on what should be saved. I personally think that, uh, you know, every every person, every American should have at least ten thousand in a savings account or in an investment account that's liquid, right? So that they can take that out or take bits and pieces of it out if anything were to happen. So that's just my rule of thumb that I like to live by. At least have access to $10,000 in cash that you're not paying any sort of interest on. That leads me into the fourth thing that debt-free people do, and that's organizing their finances, right? They know what money's coming in, and they know what money's coming out, and they know how much they're spending on housing, on food, on transportation. They, they have it all basically planned out and there's so many apps for this or even you know an Excel spreadsheet, but there's so many apps for this where you, know, you can hook it up to your bank account. So every time you make a charge on your card or you know, spend money somewhere, you're able to see where that's being allocated to and then make better decisions. So for the past five years, I've personally just created an Excel spreadsheet and I track my income from my nine to five. I track my income from various other ventures, you know, like the stock market, uh, my business, etc. And then I, I track you know, what's going out. I track you know, all my uh, utility bills, my mortgage, um, you know, any other payments that I'm making that are going out of my account. And so at the end of the month, I go and I look and I'm like, okay, hey, this much I'm saving this much, but let's see, what did I spend my money on and how much money came in and from what sources? And it really helps me keep, you know, a level head and, and helps me basically keep myself in check so I don't overspend. I mean, it's just common sense to me, but debt-free people know where their money's going. You'd be surprised, and this might even be you, and I'm not harping on you, but so many people nowadays, whether you're young or old, don't know what they're spending their money on. They don't know what subscriptions they have, you know, like Disney Plus, Hulu, Netflix, you know, whatever. They don't know how much money they're spending on food or alcohol or going out or Ubers. And it's just mind boggling that at the end of the month, they're like, holy crap, I haven't saved anything and I have no idea why. But I'll tell you why, it's because you're not tracking your expenses each and every month. All right, and the fifth thing debt-free people do is taking advantage of discounts and not worrying about how they look to someone else. So a lot of people who are debt-free aren't, aren't afraid to you know, do what they want to do, aren't afraid what others are going to think about them. Right, so you could see someone who you know has a brand new Mercedes. Uh, you know, let's say it's a seventy thousand dollar E-Class Mercedes on the road, right? And then you someone pulls up next to you, 
and a Toyota 4Runner. You know, it might be forty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, something like that. Um, but the difference is, the person who has the Mercedes is, you know, paying seven hundred dollars a month for the next four years to afford that car, while the person in the Toyota 4Runner paid, you know, forty-five thousand dollars cash for that car, and they don't owe creditors or banks or anyone anything. They just outright own the vehicle and they're not afraid of what people think of them right they're they don't need to you know show off and have you know the best car or the best house or this or that they're perfectly fine in the toyota you know foreigner it's a good looking car it's reliable it's very you know capable off-road etc they don't need essentially the status symbol that is associated with you know high-end uh, you know luxury vehicles, and that's something that's really really hard for people, especially nowadays, to wrap their head around. Especially young people. So many people nowadays want to essentially fake it before they make it. They want to have the Gucci belts. They want to have the Mercedes, the BMW, the Audi, right? They want to have the the large house. They want to have the Rolex. They they want basically to look like they're wealthy. They want to look like they're well off. But if you notice, especially like, I mean, everyone always says is look at Bill Gates, look at Warren Buffett, look at Steve Jobs when he was alive, look at Jay Leno even. Um, these people are not wearing any designer clothes. For the most part, you know, they're not, they're not uh, buying hyper exotic, you know, vehicles that are millions of dollars. Um, you know, they're, they're just not doing that. They know how much money they have. They know where they stand in life. They're happy with what they have and they don't need to basically buy excessive things. That's not, to, that's not to say if you're a multimillionaire or billionaire that you can't have a nice car. It's just that so many people who do not have the money nowadays are trying to fake it until they make it by you know, getting themselves in debt, not, came, but not paying cash for anything, and essentially trying to look like they're successful. All right guys, well those are the five things that debt-free people do to really just keep them debt free, keep them happy, and keep them sane, knowing that they do not know, they do not owe anyone anything. And for some people, that can be, like I said, a very, very freeing experience. All right, guys, well, if you enjoyed this video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up and, of course, subscribe to my channel for future content relating to business, financing, and passive income. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.